Welcome to lecture 62, exercise 3. The challenge for this exercise is to design a job class for Harold's Home Services. The class contains four data fields, job description, for example, wash windows, time in hours to complete the job, for example, 3.5, per hour rate charged for the job, for example, $25, and total fee for the job, which is the hourly rate, times hours. Include properties to get and set each field except the total fee. That field will be read only and its value is calculated each time either the hourly fee or the number of hours is set. Overload the plus operator so that two jobs can be added. The sum of two jobs is a new job containing the descriptions of, of both original jobs joined by and the num, the sum of the time in hours for the original job, and the av the average of the hourly rate for the original jobs. Write a main function that demonstrates all the methods working correctly. So, if you like to try this challenge on your own, go ahead and try it. Otherwise, I will solve it. So, all the components of this we have seen before. Um, there's a couple tricky things here and there, like the, the, the operator overload, how it has a lot of conditions that need to be set. You need to join the job descriptions using the, but with an end in the middle. You need to take the sum of the hours and the average of the hourly rates for the, from the original job. So that's kind of confusing there. We have a couple read, we have a read only that's getting set based off of two different properties. So there's a couple things going on. I'll go through it all. Um, the best, so we're going to start with um, designing the actual job class. So you go ahead and right click and you click add new item. And I'll go ahead and add this new class called job. So we have this class called job. Okay, so it says the class contains four data fields. We have a job description, time in hours to complete the job, per hour rate, and the total fee for the job. So let's go ahead and start creating those. So job description should be a string. So we'll say private string job descript semicolon time in hours to complete the job example 3.5. So it's going to be a double. So we're going to say private double time to complete per hour rate charge for the job. So that's going to be another double. So we'll say private double hourly rate. And then the last one is the total fee for the job, which is also going to be a double. OK. OK, so last time in the last exercise, we did not use a constructor because it didn't say to. But it also does not say to in this one, but I'm going to use one this time. So let's go ahead and create the constructor that requires all four pieces of information. So we'll say public job string descript double time to complete double hourly rate and double total uh, total. Actually, no, we don't need double total fee because that is calculated automatically based off of the other information. So we only need three these three pieces of data. Now, I'm not going to set them just quite yet because I want to set them by their properties. Because remember, it says that when you change one either uh, either pieces of data, so if, if you change either the hourly rate or the time to comp uh, complete, it needs to recalculate the total fee. So that's going to happen by when you change the actual property. We'll also make a call in there to calculate total fee. So that's why I want to actually set in the constructor through the property so that it also calls that function automatically. So let's, let's actually create the properties that we need. So it says includes properties to get and set each field except the total fee. So let's go ahead and start with that. That's going to be read only. So we're going to say public string job descript get return job descript set job descript equals value public double 
time to complete. Get. Return. Time to complete. Set. Time to complete equals value. Public double hourly rate. Hourly rate. Get. Return hourly rate. Set. Hourly rate equals value. And then the last one it says. The total fee will be read only, so we know how to do that. We only specify the get accessor. So I'm going to say public double total fee. Is that what I call it? Yeah, total fee. Get return total fee. So those are all our properties so far. Now it says that total fee, like I said before, where is it? And its value is calculated each time either the hourly fee or the number of hours is set. So depending on what depending depending on whether either of these pieces of data change, we need to calculate the total fee. So to go ahead and create the first the calc total fee private function. So we're gonna say private void calc total fee. And now the total fee is based off of the hourly rate times the hours. So we'll say um, total fee equals hourly rate times time to complete. So now the total fee is set. So now we have to, we just have to call this function wherever we need to. So every time the time to complete changes, we need to recalculate. Or every time the hourly rate changes, we also need to recalculate. So those are the two places we actually need to recalculate our price. So we put them in the set accessors for both of them. Okay. Oh, we need to uh, fix our constructor. So in our constructor, when I set the values, I want to go through the properties to make sure that these functions get called to actually handle that. So I'm going to say join the script equals the script. Oops. Equals to script. Time to complete the property equals time to complete the parameter. And then hourly rate equals hourly rate. So now our constructor is set. Everything is set up perfect. The last thing we need to do with the class is to overload the plus operator. So it says it can add two jobs together, and the sum of two jobs is a new job containing different information. So we can start with that. So remember to create an operator overload. We'll put it right here. It's public static, then your return type, which is going to be a job, it says. Then operator, whatever you're overloading. So I'm going to say operator plus. I want to overload the plus operator. Then the left hand and the right hand side in the parameters is the left hand and the right hand side of the plus operator. So I'm going to say the left hand side is job, is a job, that's job one, and the right hand side is another job, that is job two. So we have our operator overload. Now it says the sum of two jobs is a new job containing the description of both original jobs joined by an N. So let's start with that. So it's a new job, so we need to create a new job. So we'll say job new job or we'll say um, added job equals new job now the description is them both with the added together so I'm gonna say j1 now we're in the, by the way we're in the constructor right now we're we're giving the description so we're gonna say the description of the new job is j1 dot description join description oh wait why did I have join description this should be a job description. I don't know why I did that. Let's fix that. So job description. So it's going to be j1.job description plus, and we need to add that end, right? And then plus j, uh, why am I doing this? This should be j2. j2.job description. Now, 
we can make this a little bit better like I did in one of the lectures. We can make separate strings to make it cleaner. So I can say string new descript equals this and then just plug in new descript. But we'll actually do that. It's a little bit cleaner. So we have the new description and then we'll just pass that into the constructor like that. So that's the description of this new job will be our new description. Now it says, what else? The sum the sum of the time in hours for the original job. So now we have to do the sum. So we'll say string new um, total hours is equal to J1 dot time to complete plus J2 time to complete. So depending on the, so how long it takes to complete each job, we'll put into here and this is a double. So how long it takes, we'll add it together and then we'll put it into here and then we'll dump that into the new one also. So new total hours. That, so the new job so far has a new description, a new total hours. Now we need the last part, the sum and the average of the hourly rate for the, from the original jobs. So we need to calculate the average of the hourly rate. So to do that, we need to add them both up, divide by two. So we'll say double new hourly rate is equal to J1. We'll say in parentheses, J1 dot hourly rate plus J2 dot hourly rate. And we'll divide that by two. That's how you calculate average. So now we have the new hourly rate and we'll plug that into the new job also by saying new hourly rate. So now this new job has all the information it needs. The last thing we need to do is just return it back to whoever's using this. So we're going to say return the added job. So this new job gets sent back to whoever is using this operator. So the last thing it says to do is just write a main function that demonstrates all the methods working correctly. So let's create two jobs. We'll say job job one equals new job we need a description so we'll use wash windows time to complete i don't know five hours the hourly rate they're getting fifteen dollars an hour to do that so we have our job one let's make job job two equals new job we'll say take out trash this will take maybe two hours this is a big office let's say and then the hourly rate for this will be uh, 1250. So we have two jobs. Now we could, I mean, we know everything's set. We know that all our properties are set and, and all that information, but we really don't care about that. All we care about for each is how much it's going to cost, basically, the total fee. So we'll display the total fee for each job. So we'll say J1. Let's first say console.write line j1 dot total fee. Now this gets calculated automatically, so that's job one total fee. And then we'll print job two total fee. We can add some descriptive text. We can say let's actually yeah, let's make let's say placeholder one, comma, placeholder two, comma, placeholder three, comma, placeholder four. And we'll just plug in all the information. So the first placeholder will have the description. So we'll say J1 dot uh, job description. For the second one, we'll have J1 dot time to complete. Third one will have J1 dot hourly rate. And the fourth one will have J1 dot the total fee. So all the information will be there. We'll do that for job two also. We'll change these to twos. And let's first start off by actually running this. And we have an error. What is the error? Oh, okay, I see. Um, I don't know why I put four there. These should be three. Let's try that again. Okay, so we see wash windows is the first job. It's going to take five hours to do. Getting paid $15 an hour. That means you'll call it $75. The second job, take out trash, will take two hours, twelve fifty an hour, so that will cost twenty-five dollars. So so far so good. That seems to be working. It's automatically calculating how much money it will cost the company on each of those properties. The last one to do is just the adding the two jobs together. So we'll say job job three 
equals job one plus plus job two. That's the whole point of operator overloading. And then we'll print the last jobs information by changing these all to threes. Let's run it one more time. So you can see the third job, his job now is to wash the windows and take out the trash. That would, that would take him seven hours, which is five plus two. He's getting paid thirteen seventy-five. So that's the average of the two jobs. The first one's $15 and the second one is 12.5, which is an interesting way of going about doing this. So that would, that would be thirteen seventy-five now. And then the total price is them adding together ninety six twenty five. Let me let me check that formula. Yep, everything seems working. So yeah, so it takes this the the new price is this times that, which is ninety six ninety six dollars and twenty five cents.